said to me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. I don't, I don't remember exactly what psalm that is, but I know it is one, and it's a true word. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome. Glad you're here. And for those who join us online, we're glad you're with us as well, because whether we be here or whether we be in our homes, the one thing that unifies us together is the one faith, the one Lord, and the one spirit that is in all places when we worship in his name. So if you're at home or on vacation or here in this room, we're glad you're here as we worship together in Jesus' name. So, it's hot. I'm not wearing a jacket, I think, for the first time in my preaching life inside. I woke up this morning, and I said, I'm not putting on a jacket. It's 100 degrees. I'm not doing it. It took me a few years to get smart enough to figure that out, apparently. And then it da didn't dawn on me until I showed up today that I'm wearing red. I told everybody to wear red last week. What did I wear? Not red. So... I, I, I apparently have absolutely no calendar awareness, and, um, but I think we can worship anyway. I think. I'm pretty sure. We're going to try. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for the morning you've given to us and the opportunity to worship you. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We are so grateful to be yours, and it is our great joy to return our thanks and praise and worship this morning. Send your spirit upon us, O God, that we might come even closer to you. Loosen our lips, open our minds and our hearts, that we might praise you the way you deserve to be praised. For you are good and wonderful and honorable. You are our Lord and our Savior. We worship you and nothing else matters for the next hour but our praise, our worship, our relationship with you. May all this sound good in your ears and look good in your sight, O Lord, for it's you we wish to please. We pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have, we're starting with a video. So you guys... to repeat the thanks. I was out of town, so I come back, and it just kind of happened. That's pretty awesome. Maybe I should leave again. <laughs> um, we're going to continue our service by standing together to sing To God Be the Glory.
please remain standing. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Howdy to you too. <laughs> Would you join me in our statement of faith this morning? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Would you join me in prayer, please? Dear Lord, we do thank you for being the awesome God that you are, a God of power and might, and yet a God of, of perfect love who gave us the perfect gift of everlasting life. The life on this earth, certainly, but the life thereafter that goes on forever with you and your Son. As we give back to you our services financially, we ask your blessings on our gifts, Lord. We ask for your presence with our pastor this morning as he delivers our message. Give us ears to hear and a willingness to respond to his words. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And I would remind you that the offering plates are at the back of the church. And now we're going to sing our second hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Would you stand and join as we sing?
and you may be seated. We believe all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That's from 2 Timothy 3.16. When I finish a scripture reading here in worship, and I hold up the Bible and I say, this is the word of God for the people of God, I really believe that's true. That the scripture really is the word of God for the people of God. And that would be true no matter what portion of the Bible I have just read. This is simply what we Christians believe and have believed from the very beginning. That all scripture is inspired by God. So, if all of it is indeed equally inspired by God... It is also true that it is equal, not equally all read by the people of God. There are parts of the Bible we are quite familiar with. John 3.16, I bet a whole chunk of you can say that from memory. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I imagine a lot of you folks can say that part of the scriptures because we know that part. It's, it's w- well known. My guess is lots of you can probably at least get part of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? He leadeth me. We we know those parts of the scriptures. And even if we can't recite it exactly, we know a lot of the stories from memory. You can probably tell the basic gist of the prodigal son. You can probably, you know, tell me what happened in the Exodus with Moses. You can probably tell basic stories, Noah, those kind of things. We know certain parts of the scripture quite well. Then there are other parts that we don't know hardly at all. There are parts that are more obscure and more less read and less taught and less preached on. Yet these are also still the inspired word of God, no less than the parts that we know. So what I decided to do for a few weeks this summer is I wanted to target a few of those parts that, frankly, I don't know much about. And my guess is you don't either. And so the way we're going to do this is I'm going to look at we're going to lay out five particular unique books. And what makes these five books unique, unique is that they are the shortest books of the Bible consisting of only one chapter in each one of the five. There are five one hit wonders or one chapter wonders in the bible and what's for the next five weeks we're going to look at them because why all scripture is inspired by god and is as useful in teaching for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness and my guess is we don't know much about these little five books and so we're going to find out what god's word has to teach us through these one chapter wonders so You can probably do your homework. Google searches are a wonderful thing. And you can probably figure out what these five books are for yourself. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what they're going to be. We're going to look at, from the Old Testament, the book of Obadiah. Did you even know there was a book of Obadiah? You probably, you may may have learned the Sunday school song, right? And, you know, we do the books of the Bible, so you know Obadiah is in there. And there are four New Testament letters that are only one chapter. Philemon, uh, 2 John, 3 John, and, and Jude. And over the next five weeks, I'm going to encourage you to read all five of these yourself. Because not only will you have read the scriptures and be ready for them before worship rolls across, you will also be able to brag to your friends that I have finished five books of the Bible this month. <laughs> you don't have to tell them how long they are. For all they know, you read the whole Pentateuch. But you know, so, you know, yeah. Anyway, so today we're going to start with the Old Testament book of Obadiah. Now, We don't know a whole lot about who Obadiah was. Uh, We are not even for sure when he lived or where he wrote it from. Uh, Most scholars uh, think that his his purpose in in the the nature of this, he probably wrote right after the fall of Jerusalem when it fell to the Babylonians in, in the 6th century B.C. What we do know, even though we don't know where or when exactly, we do know why he wrote. Why he wrote 
was to announce the judgment of God on the people of Edom. And he wrote to, to announce the judgment of the people of Edom, particularly for their unjust treatment of the people of Judah in, peop- in, in their time of need. So this is a short, to-the-point prophecy that, as you will see, does not hold anything back. And I won't read the whole thing. It's, it's only 21 verses. But the verses are, are, we're going to read will give you a good feel for, for the whole thing. So we're going to read Obadiah, verses 10 through 18. Listen to the word of God. For the slaughter and violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. On the day that you stood aside, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you too were like one of them. But you should not have gloated over your brother on the day of his misfortune. You should not have rejoiced over the people of Judah on their day of ruin. You should not have boasted on their day of distress. You should not have entered the gate of my people on the day of their calamity. You should not have joined in the gloating over Judah's disaster on the day of his calamity. You should not have looted his goods on the day of his calamity. You should not have stood at the crossings to cut off his fugitives. You should not have handed over his survivors on the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near against all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, all the nations around you shall drink. They shall drink and gulp down, and shall be as though they had never been. But on Mount Zion there shall be those that escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall take possession of those who dispossessed them. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them, and there shall be no survival or survivor of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. All right, Israel and Edom. That's what we're talking about here, those two nations. And they had a, um, gosh, I think they had a complicated history. And it goes way, 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 way back. It goes all the way back to two brothers, to the fraternal twins, Esau and Jacob, sons of Isaac and Rebekah. If you remember their stories, they contended with each other even in the womb. And their whole lives were spent in this, we are brothers and enemies at the same time. This is the drama of their entire lives. And this drama between the two brothers will be lived out then in the following centuries through the two nations that came from them. Eventually, the children of Jacob, the younger of the two twins, by the way, will become known as Israel as Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And they will occupy the land of Canaan, which is largely modern-day Israel. While the older twin, Esau, his children will become the nation of Edom. Both of those names, both Esau and Edom, being red because he was red-haired and and, and so forth. Anyway, and they will go on to occupy the land on the mostly on the southern, a little bit on the eastern shores of the Dead Sea, which is modern-day Jordan for the most part. In other words, these two brothers will occupy nations that butt up against each other. They will always be in close proximity to one another, and they are kin. But they do not always treat each other such. As a matter of fact, they do not treat each other well most of the time. So what should have been allies 
Instead, just like the two brothers themselves that founded the nations, they are oftentimes, or probably more oftentimes, enemies than they are friends and allies. So that's kind of the long history of Edom and Israel, of Jacob and Esau. And all of this then comes to a head at the darkest time of biblical Israel's history, which is when Jerusalem is destroyed by the Babylonians, the temple is leveled, the, 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 the wealth is carried off along with the leadership of the nation. All that happens to, to, with the Babylonians. Darkest time in, in Israel's history in the Bible. And instead of helping their kin in their time of need, what do the Edomites do? They help the Babylonians. Instead of defending their kinfolk, that we need to follow. You know the way not to end up like the Edomites on the wrong end of the gods you should not have? Do you know how not to end up on that end of the list? By not doing it. Don't do it. <laughs> this, this is one of the simplest truths that God teaches us. And it's also one of the most profound truths that God teaches us. Simply don't do it. And while it's really simple and it's really powerful... It is something we struggle with mightily. And sometimes I wonder if the reason we struggle with it is because we sometimes fail to simply say it out loud and straight up. Sometimes we just need to be reminded to not do it. If you know that it's mean, don't do it. If you know that it's hurtful, don't do it. If you know that it's deceitful, don't do it. If you know that it's unjust, don't do it. If you know it's exploitive, don't do it. If you know it's craven, don't do it. If you know it's dehumanizing, don't do it. If you know it's wrong, simply enough, don't do it. Why? Well, first, because it's wrong. Surely, right and wrong still matter in this world. And even if they don't matter in this world, I guarantee you right and wrong still matters to God. And if that isn't enough motivation in and of itself, remember the last line that we just read from Obadiah. Remember that your deeds shall return upon your own head. So let us think well about our own deeds. Let us think well about the way we have treated one another. Do we want our own deeds to return upon our own heads? If your answer is no, then you might want to change your deeds. This is just simply straightforward word of prophecy. Obadiah, short as it is, is a powerful message of God's justice towards Israel. And it's an equally powerful message of warning to the people of Edom. And it's still a powerful and timely message in our age and in every age. We need to be reminded that our deeds matter. What we do, it matters. What we don't do, it matters. What we have done matters. What we should not have done matters. It matters to the ones that we have done it to. It matters to the ones we have not done it to. And ultimately, because it matters to people, it matters to God. Because God jealously loves every last person he has made. And we are not to treat them any other way than as God's beloved children. 
what we do matters because what we do affects the people God loves. That's the message of Obadiah. And I got to tell you, two weeks ago, eh, three weeks ago, I didn't know that. I had no clue what Obadiah was about. I knew it was a prophet that said something mean to me about somebody. But digging into that message, it was just so convicting that, oh my goodness, it matters how we treat one another. I think I kind of knew that. But I needed to be remembered, reminded that it matters how we treat one another and it matters to God how we treat one another. So let us treat one another well. We come to the communion table and part of the power of the table that I think sometimes is lost on us in the modern age is that in the ancient world you were bound to the people you shared a meal with. It was an honor culture and if you shared a table with somebody you were just unified to each other in a way that could not be broken without your whole reputation being destroyed. <laughs> to break fellowship with someone you shared the table with was just an unthinkable sin. And so when people came to the table, when Jesus had people come to the table together, by the way, this is one of the, 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 the adds part of the, 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 the the piling on of what Judas actually did to Jesus that he shared the table with him and then went out and betrayed him. Just unthinkable. So we come to the table and when we share a table with one another we are being bound with one another to look out for each other's well-being and each other's uh, care. And so when we come to the table today it, it comes with that reminder that we have to treat each other accordingly. As people who have broken bread together and who have shared the cup together, we owe each other a covenant of care and support and unity. That goes along an awful lot with what Obadiah was teaching us, is that you can't treat people poorly and be right with God. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, saying, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love towards us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it's a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, He took bread, blessed it, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, lifted it and blessed it and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. To your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we are one body. One Lord, one body, one people in Christ. And again, this cup from which we drink the blood of a new covenant, a covenant that means the salvation of all who would come to Christ. Those who are going to help me serve, if you could come forward at this time. And if you're new here in the church, just let me, uh, let, me let you know how we, we celebrate the Lord's table here in, in, at St. Mark's. We, um, we understand that the table is open to all. If you would, would like to come to Christ, you are welcome to come to this, his table. As all are invited to the great banquet, so all are invited to the great banquet's foretaste here at this table. If you want to come and be close to Christ, that's the key thing. If you hear his invitation and say, yes, I would like to be with you, Lord, then this table is simply for you. If you hear that invitation and say, eh, maybe not, then fine. Stay where you're at. That's fine, too. Nobody's going to judge you. You can do whatever you do as well. Just understand that the table of the Lord invites folks who want to be drawing closer to him. If that's you, this table's for you. And the way we do this is we'll, we'll, you'll come forward, we'll give you a piece of the bread from, from the loaf, and we'll have, we have individual cups in, in the uh, in, in, uh, juice that you'll be able to take one of those. After you receive the bread and, and the cup, you can stop here and pray if you would like. If not, you can just return back to your seats. And if you have trouble getting up here to the front and, and doing that, we'll be more than happy to take the bread and, and the cup to, to you. So, you're welcome to come, to draw closer to Christ, to be part of his table this day. All are invited. The ushers will help guide. Won't you come? And let's sing as we come.
Jesus ready stands to save you full of pity love and power let's repeat that we'll go back to thank you come ye sinners poor and needy weak and wounded sick and sore jesus ready stands to save you full of pity love and power i will arise and go to jesus he will embrace me in his arms in the arms of my dear savior oh there are ten thousand charms come ye thirsty come and welcome God's free bounty, glorify, true belief and true repentance, every grace that brings you nigh. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me.
Will you stand as you're able? That last line of that hymn is to me one of the most beautiful and challenging things we ever sing. That I will be ever, only, and all for thee. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for the chance to come to this, your table. Thank you for your welcome. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you for your love that not just invites, but that strengthens and purifies. Thank you, O oh Lord, that through your grace and through your strength we might truly be ever and only and all for you. All these things we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is three candles, three white candles, are out here on a reason. Does anybody know what today's liturgical calendar holy day is? It is Trinity Sunday, a few of you guys know, and that is the day we celebrate the fact that God is three in one. It's the thing that makes us unique, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, unique in, in, in person, all, all God. Uh, the, there's all kinds of Greek words involved here, but the truth is the mystery of the Trinity is how we know that God is love and that the, the it's, it's one of the beautiful things we believe in. So just remember that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is with each and every one of you, each and every moment of your life. So we go out from this place today, 
And announcement-wise, um, here's what we, I know. Our faith promise continues to grow. We're now at $47,340. I, I'm just blown away by that number, by the way. Y'all are paying $6 million a gallon for gas. <laughs> and, uh, and, and a package of hot dogs is somewhere now the, the cost of a car payment. And, and, and the people are still being this generous uh, with missions. Just, uh, I'm, I'm just floored by that and, and humbled. And, and just make, it's so exciting what God's doing in this place. So we're excited by that. Um, th- we have our next pop-up, uh, our, our, our fellowship events is a, a rescheduled s'mores night down here at the uh, boathouse uh, area the, uh, o- at, at the, the, where the ca- cafe is down here in the boat ramp down along Lake Overholzer. We're going we're gonna to pop up. Uh, it, it, it might be a little toasty, and you might be able to actually cook your, 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 your marshmallows by just placing them on the sidewalk. <laughs> but it's also a great time to be out at the lake, and maybe you can rent some kayaks and do that kind of So it'll be fun. So anyway, that's our, our next pop-up night is coming up this week, and uh, there'll be more information that comes out from the church on all that things. And this week, our children's uh, stuff continues on with CDO and our remarkable, remarkable kids and all that good stuff going on on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, anything else we need to announce today before we go? All right, then it's time to go. Thank you guys again for being here today. Thank you for making Sunday morning a priority in your week and in your life. Uh, it matters that we come together and worship, so thank you f- for being here. But as we leave this place, remember, Sunday morning isn't the only thing that matters. It matters that we follow the ways of God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It matters how we treat each other. It matters that we do the things God would have us to do, to, to be humble, to do justice, to walk humbly with our God. You remember the things he taught in, 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 my, in Micah. Those things matter. So just as you've been here today and it's a great thing, take all this out with you and live justly and righteously in God's world this week, treating people as you would like to be treated and bringing the kingdom of God just a little bit more into people's lives through the way you love them and honor them and treat them. Let's do that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above the heavenly host, praise Father's Now go, living as if you believe what you say you do.